Hey everybody, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this photo that was taken a couple years ago of Eric Clapton and Jim Abbott. And I remember pretty well when this photo was taken because it was in 2021 when Eric Clapton was touring some of the southern states. It was during the time of mass and also mandates, and he toured the southern states, and I think he wouldn't have been able to go to the arenas in a lot of northern states. So he went to sort of the, some of the southern states that were a little more open. And uh, I, I remember this pretty well because I saw him in Atlanta just a few nights after this photo was taken. And in fact, I reviewed that concert, uh, which is on in my little Clapton playlist there, if you look, if you want to see my review of the concert, which was a great concert. There we go. But I remember pretty well when this photo was taken and circulating on Facebook because I was actually reading some of the Facebook pages with some interest at the time because they were kind of, all the people would post their thoughts about the show as he was making his visits to different cities. I think he went to New Orleans and uh, Texas and Atlanta. I, I forget where else, but places like that. But I remember when this photo surfaced, it was like a day or two before I saw Clapton in Atlanta. And there were so many people on Facebook that were just really, really mad about this photo. And I just want to make a little disclaimer. This is not a partisan political video. I'm not saying, um, you know, what, uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying that uh, anything about the politics of this photo, uh, which I guess is kind of my main point that music transcends politics. But, um, I did want to talk about it a little bit because I remember when this happened and there were people on Facebook that were just saying, you know, I've listened to Eric Clapton since, you know, ninth grade and, you know, now I'm 60 years old and I'm never going to listen to one more note of that man's music ever. This was the last straw and there were all kinds of comments like that. And of course, there were about as many just cheering it on, you know, go Eric Clapton, you know, kind of reading into it, sort of a, well, Clapton's on our team, as it were. And uh, which is too bad. I saw a lot of comments, believe it or not, uh, making snarky remarks about Jim Abbott being in a wheelchair. I thought that that that's kind of that just tells you how low our politics have gotten. Um, but I did kind of want to make a few comments uh, about this photo because it resurfaced a little bit lately on Facebook again, and I sort of think it's an interesting issue where people get so mad about a photo. And we've had a number of other things like that, too, like when politicians play music at their rally, you know, while people are kind of congregating. And that, that can be controversial sometimes if they play songs by the wrong artist or something. So once again, this is not a partisan political video. And I feel like uh, I would say the same thing if this were a photo of Eric Clapton with Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer. And I bet you Clapton would just as easily pose for a photo of Gav with Gavin Newsom. If he happened to be an Eric Clapton fan and went to his show, I have zero doubt that he'd be happy to smile and shake Gavin Newsom's hand if Gavin Newsom was a true Eric Clapton fan. And that, that's a great thing because, as we always say, but don't always believe, music should bring us together. Music should never be something that divides us. It's, too, too, it's a, a universal human love, music. And so you hate to see uh, such bitterness and hatred kind of, and I, I would, I'm not using that term lightly, hatred, uh, enter into our world of music. But I did kind of want to say a little bit about it. And the first was that, you know, apparently Jim Abbott's a Eric Clapton fan. And um, 
Eric Clapton is not in the business of telling his fans to go F themselves, I don't think. That would not be a very good business move, if nothing else, you know. So if you've got someone that likes your music, uh, that's great. And, uh, you know, and some, you know, and the music's always a positive in that context, you know. Uh, if someone likes your music, that's great. And so if Jim Abbott's an uh, Eric Clapton fan, that's great. That's something that uh, can maybe bring us together. Do we even want to have things bring us together? Sometimes I'm not sure, but music should bring us together. And uh, so I think that it was sort of a professional thing for him to do. He's in Texas and, you know, and the governor of the state of Texas came to see him. Um, and, uh, you know, I just think that would he would have been a real unprofessional jerk if he, you know, wouldn't even take a picture with him. That's my own opinion. I know that probably a lot of other people as well. I wouldn't, you know, don't even let him in the arena or definitely don't let him backstage or something. Um, I think Bruce Springsteen and old Governor Chris Christie had some standoffs. Like Chris Christie is a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, all the New Jersey culture that's in Bruce Springsteen and sort of embodied politically in some ways, at least with Chris Christie. And I know he used to go to see Bruce Springsteen shows and Bruce Springsteen denounced him. And I always didn't really agree with Bruce Springsteen about that for that reason, because music brings us together. And if you have people liking such great songs as Born to Be Run and Born to Run and Thunder Road, um, there, there's no negative to loving those songs. I, you know, I don't care who you are, you know, those songs lift us up to a higher place. And, you know, if we're if we're so down in the mud of politics that we can't even appreciate those great songs without some political angle, uh, that's really too bad. Um, so I feel that way about Eric Clapton. You know, if, if the governor was sort of uh, appreciating Eric Clapton and a big Eric Clapton fan, uh, that's great. And I think the professional uh, and decent thing to do for a well-brought-up <laughs> young man like Eric Clapton with good manners and, you know, is... His grandma and grandpa taught him to be uh, polite and courteous and uh, respectful. That's a good way. We should all be more like that, in my humble opinion, regardless of politics. And that, that was kind of leads into my second point. Music is always a positive. It is never a negative. I remember, uh, and again, this I, I, I want to be careful. I, I don't sound like I'm advocating any political position. But I do remember watching a Donald Trump rally in 2020. And uh, while people were gathering, I think Christy Nome was there and it was sort of a big, you know, outdoors. Of, I think it was the 4th of July. But uh, they were playing some songs, you know, before before the speakers took the stage. I, I don't know. I don't even remember. But it was, again, it was on Facebook. And right in the middle of 2020, remember how mean Facebook was? You had all those Black Lives Matters protests and everything was so divisive. I don't think we've ever really come back from that. It's been years now of this vitriol years, ever since, what, 2015? But it was really bad in that summer of 2020. But while all these people were sitting in a rally out in front of Mount Rushmore, as I recall, just a classic Americana scene over the big sound system, they started playing a bunch of great old Neil Young, I don't know, Harvest, uh, Keep Rocking in the Free World. And I, again, I remember on Facebook, people know Neil Young should you know, never let his song be played at a Donald Trump rally. How dare Donald Trump play Neil Young's songs? And um, I kind of thought that to myself again. Neil Young is always a positive because Neil Young's music is great. And there is never a situation when it is not a positive contribution to that situation because it's true music. It's wonderful, true, authentic music. And there's never never uh, it's never a negative i don't care who you're playing it for it lifts people up to a higher place and that's what good music does and so i've never really agreed with this you know don't let so and so play my songs because i think it, it makes music political in a in a sort of partisan way I, you know what there, there are a lot of you know poly, I, I like a lot of 60s protest music which can get really political but i still feel in the 60s you had songs that brought people together you know, I did that video just the other day of uh, He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother, which was kind of late 60s, early 70s era song. And it's got those beautiful, uh, you know, it, my heart is uh, filled with the sadness that everyone can't be uh, have the joy of gladness of love for one another. We need to love one another. And I remember that in the 60s. I was a kid, but I definitely remember that. Those are wonderful things. And 
we don't want to we don't want to have screw you all the time in our music. So I, I never what was that song. Uh, don't worry, be happy. I remember George Bush got in trouble for playing that. It seems to be often the Republicans playing songs and the Democrats complaining about certain songs being played. I actually don't think there's anything legally they can really do because that music is. If they're playing it in a and not and not in a commercial way, I think you're allowed to play music over a sound system, whatever you want. But but a lot of times politicians will drop it if there's a big complaint from the artist or enough people. But I've never really agreed with that. And again, I would I would feel the same way if uh, you know people in the other party were playing Eric Clapton or whatever Ted Nugent. He's another one that can get really political. I don't think it's really helped him, has it? Because uh, I'm, I like Ted Nugent. I think he's a great guitar player. He's a really smart man, um, and a very articulate man. And uh, his mouth—he's one of those people that his mouth has kind of got him in trouble. And almost, you almost—and and that's what we don't want. You almost sometimes you almost forget Ted Nugent's one of the great rock guitarists of classic rock. I mean, got to be one of the great rock guitarists. And the way the way politics is sort of clouded his image when people think of him today. I, I often don't think they even think of him as a guitar player. And uh, first and foremost, Eric Clapton is a guitar player. And uh, a great guitar player uh, plays music for people, humanity, all of us. You know, sure, there's a context for music. You might write, write songs about this or that, or uh, you might write a song about this woman and not that woman. You know, there are topic, there's topicality in songs, but ultimately music is a gift to humanity. And I, I you know, it just so shows you how divided we are uh, into these kind of silos where you can't even have an artist, um, you know, whose music is loved by so many millions of people. He's got to like quadrant off all the people who think the wrong way. And I guess tell them all to, you know, go home, you know. It's not a very good financial move probably, is it? You know, um, uh, uh, aside from philosophically, <clears throat> Philosophically, I really disagree with that. And the final point was, I'll, uh, and one of the reasons I made this video is because uh, I will always defend uh, Eric Clapton in particular. Um, he's done so many good things, you know, and you, uh, and uh, you know, he's he's made some uh, comments some uh, people didn't like. I think in 1976 he made some drunken comments uh, supporting, was it Enoch Powell um, uh, when he was really drunk? Apparently all his critics have never really been drunk in 1976. You know, <laughs> the 70s were a pretty different time. But, uh, you know, and he's, he's talked about that. He talks about it in his autobiography. But, uh, you know, and he was so uh, intoxicated. Well, people... People, uh, you know, p and, and that was a long time ago, but people, uh, our, our society now, it's not forgiving, it's mean, it's cruel, uh, it can be, uh, and politics make it that way. And uh, I will always defend Eric Clapton uh, musically and as a, as, a, as a person, and I, uh, I just, it's just ridiculous. If you look at all the things he's done in his life, all the uh, money he's raised for charity, all the work he's done for people, um, in recovery, um, you know, all the, the lifelong friends he's had. You know, you can tell a lot about a person by the friends that are around him. And, and he's, you know, he's a person that uh, is someone with lifelong friends. And I just hate to see politics uh, get into music uh, in that way. I, you know, it's always, it's, you know, you can sing. I, I've sung political songs and had my views. But uh, when it when it becomes uh, this kind of tribal, uh, almost like I'm a shunning or something, we got to marginalize and shun all these people and sort of it's like excommunication or something in the Middle Ages. You know, we're just gonna, you know, put these people in Siberia. Uh, that's not good. It's and it's not good f for the country. It's not good <laughs> for humanity. <laughs> and it's definitely not good for music. You know, because like I said, music should bring us together. So. I saw this photo was kind of circulating again with some of those comments, and um, I don't find it offensive at all. And you know what? If that was Eric Clapton with Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer, I would similarly, or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or Mr. Trump or whatever. I would, you know, if they're people who like Eric Clapton and they're out to have a good time and enjoy his music, uh, that's a positive. That is never, ever, ever a negative thing.
you know, unless you're trying to score points or win or something. It is never a bad thing when people love great music and come together to share in the joy of listening to great music together in a live setting. That That's always a great thing. And, uh, you know, I wish we could see it more often. Uh, and I will certainly always defend Eric Clapton. Gosh, he's got, you know, it's what a legacy that man has, you know, uh, and uh, musically and in other ways, you know. Uh, so thank you very much. I just kind of wanted to make those remarks. Thank you. God bless you.